everyone had that game that didn't make it. It's small and you don't know if it's gonna do well. You are six months into it and then Capcom throws it out like it didn't even happen. So when I tell people I think Deceive Inc. is really good and has a chance to grow into a fun genre all its own, they look at me like I'm Nigel West Dickens. Deceive Inc. is a hero shooter with an emphasis on social stealth systems. Every player is disguised as an NPC, and ambushing someone means you get to beat the crap out of them. You incrementally go up in levels of authority with your disguises while trying to act as much like a civilian as possible. It is an absolute blast and I'm gonna open this by saying that you should probably play it. It dropped its latest season and it's got the level of quality I'd expect from a game that has been running for five years. It took me to space, okay? I'm gonna complain about the things that annoy me, but my primary goal is to convince you to give it a shot. The cast of Deceive Inc. all work for the same company, but the team building exercises are always brutal free-for-alls with some snacks left out for legal reasons. The goal of the game is to secure the briefcase, then get out. To do this, there are three vault terminals that need to be hacked into. It doesn't matter who hacks these terminals, though doing so will net you an upgrade. Once all three spots are hacked, the second half of the map opens, and you need to break into the vault to secure it. Once you have it, you need to escape through one of the extraction points. Sure, once you play it enough, it becomes a fucking speedrun where every player is trying to break all of these rules as fast as possible. But it's balanced by the fact that a real player might see you trying to ruin the game and kill you. Getting ambushed isn't instant game over, but it doesn't look good. The game doesn't have regenerating health, and 10 seconds in the line of fire is gonna put you down. So, if you escape that initial jump, you either better have a good defensive plan, or a taste for hors d'oeuvres. The game also has guards who just don't want to ever mind their own fucking business. If they spot you in a place where you're not supposed to be, they'll scold you until you are revealed. You fix this by stealing their skin in front of them, and then going on your merry way. There are no boss enemies, the only reason the guards are here is to focus you and only you when a team fight breaks out. They do a very puny amount of damage, but it builds up. You may think you could just stomp them out, but Sweet Bandit thought of that. The more you kill civilians, the higher your heat gauge gets, increasing the damage you take, until that puny damage is really fucking you up, with all those loud gunshots you're making bringing the actual trouble straight to your door. So you need to blend in to start to scavenge for intel. Intel is this big number right here, and for most of the match, it should be your primary focus. Intel can be traded to open doors and collect upgrades. You'd be surprised how easy it is to find too, because in this world, every laptop is the Hunter Biden laptop. Deceive Inc. casts you in a spy fantasy with a full lean on the fantasy part. Each one of the characters is basically a cartoon you watched when you were 13. Remember when Totally Spies got you into the inflation tag? Chavez is a classic type of spy, and a man whose chin is so big that he probably can't see his penis. He comes loaded with a revolver and defensive skills. His special ability lets you become invincible while not allowing you to fire back giving you a second to run or come up with a new strategy like the annoying fuck he is. He does, however, always come with a revolver, requiring a lot of heavy accuracy and camera work, which is weird for a man whose head and chest have the relationship of a door stopper. Chavez is also probably the most dangerous agent in a fight. At the moment, there's an umbrella shield item that allows the guy to block and poke until he kills you, and if he fucked that up, he can use his permanent shield. If you can track him down after that, then you can shoot him in the head as payment for ruining the fucking game. Ace is a sniper tracker hybrid in a game full of people that shoot you up close. There are sniping spots on the maps, and a drone that lets you scout from above, letting you harass people by tagging them without exposing you or your team to harm, until you see them pop their head out and you try to remove it. You can position Ace as a sniper, but it's not that helpful. You can try it on any map, but I prefer the Fragrant Shore. There's also an amazing sniping angle that doesn't work, because the game's render distance thought that would be too fun. Squire pings nearby items and looks like a mix between number 5 and baby oil. You can use him to find early intel. Well, that's not true, actually. See, every agent in Deceive has three parts to them. Their weapon, their ability, and their passive. However, every weapon, ability, and passive have three different variations. And Squire can swap the ping to a ton of other different things. I'm not going to break down how all of these characters differ depending on these things, because the player count might drop in another week, so I'm in a hurry. Generally, they all follow a theme. Here, let me show you what I mean. Madame Zhu is for people who think the best part of getting into fights is leaving the moment it starts. The theme with her abilities is that she can swap places with an NPC. Her variations only change how she does that. You can mark someone for later, or do it in the moment. She's one of the better combat characters if you're not choosing the ones that kill people in one shot. Her machine crossbow isn't the strongest weapon, but her ability gets her out of any jam. Hans touts a shotgun with slug rounds when aimed down sights. He comes with electricity-based abilities that inflict silence on people, making him very strong if you get the drop on people, as you could take away their tools, then hit them with a strong up-close weapon, which is really good against, say, Larson, who thinks the best part of getting into fights is leaving the moment it starts. I would tell you more, but I really don't want another Larson player in the world. 
Cavalier is a detective character who can investigate recently interacted with things, then trace the person who did it. And the reason you don't see any footage of it is because every time there's an opportunity to use it, I forgot I had it. She does come with the best set of animations in the game though. Her passive allows for a fun charging kick that goes over long distances. Melee isn't the most reliable, but it is very funny when it does work. Like this red footage of me slapping a person then trading with them. According to the numbers down here, Red and Cavalier are my mains. And that only happened because I kept trying to make their abilities do anything. Admittedly, Red's wasn't too situational. It was just given a description penned by one of the Egyptian Sphinx. Red's ability allows her to kiss everyone in front of her. This stops hostile NPCs and charms enemy players, which puts them in a special love state where if they try to attack anyone, they get inflicted with a worse debuff that increases their damage taken. It allows you to either get the first attack, disengage from the fight, or get an advantage on a vulnerable enemy. It's kind of quirky to use, but it can force a lot of chaos if you fire it off right. She's given the scoundrel role alongside Madame and Larsen, so she's supposed to prioritize escape rather than the kill. Red's guns don't deal the highest amount of damage as is, so you better have a team teammate nearby if you want to win a proper fight. She's also really hot. Let me thumb through the Totally Spies catalog to give her an episode. What the fuck was going on in the Incredible Bulk? Then we finally have the last two characters, Yumi and Sasori. Deceive styled its world from quirky 80s movies, so they thought making Yumi annoying was a creative decision. You haven't seen my final form! <laughs> go, go, special pellet, go! I would really prefer if you would be quiet. You and me has an EMP pellet that breaks enemy gadgets. And just in case normal people wanted to play her, she comes loaded with a fucking slingshot of all things. A slingshot that can kill with headshot damage. Sasori brings poison that deals damage over time. Oh, sorry, I misplaced my notes. Sasori's poison stops them from interacting with things for a little bit. Nice, okay. Sasori's main gimmick is that he can charge up an insanely strong melee attack in case you want to relive that time you really pissed someone off in Hunt Showdown. Then you have the newest character, Octo, who can gain intel faster than anyone, but also uses it as his secondary ammo source, meaning that for five intel points you can shoot a fully loaded missile. In terms of finding out who's a real person and who isn't, there's a couple of things you can look out for. There are layers of disguises all color-coded for the little ones in the room. Green is staff, blue is security, purple is elite security, and gold is for the VIPs. You should not disguise yourself as the VIP. While the VIP can go in any room, there's only one of them on the map. In most cases, you need to watch out for security guards. They have the clearance needed to find the actual fucking objectives, so a lot of players will disguise themselves as them. You can write this off at the start of the game, as everyone is currently suited up as, uh, Anne... Curtis or Ern Ernest? Deceive Inc. has a very important feature to mention. There's a built-in system which helps your animations line up with the NPCs. It reduces the head shakes, and if you walk, your character only appears to be walking in the direction you're going. That means you can move your eyes freely. This system won't save you if you act crazy. NPCs will run sometimes, and they'll crouch if they hear shooting. But they will never, ever jump. So don't hit that spacebar unless you're completely sure. Also, try not to hit any keys other than the one you were just holding. In fact, just scratch your belly. Your pointer goes on W, everything else is wrapped around your finger food of choice. NPCs will have zero thoughts on this as long as you're not backstage. If you're sure that no real players are about, do whatever. The world is decidedly plastic and doesn't want to be anything more than Truman Show set dressing. These guys are just backdrop and the occasional irritation. You don't want to know what Heat Level 3 is like. Agents come with their personal weapons and backgrounds, but there's also regular gadgets that can be taken along. I've even brought up a few of them like the shield umbrella or the flying drone. Each character has two slots for regular gadgets, which is to say that each character has one slot for gadgets because the remote hack tool is widely regarded as a must-have. It's very suspicious to walk up to a weird computer for a few seconds. The remote hack lets you do this without blowing your cover. You'll notice I don't tend to run it a lot, and that's because I live fast and dangerous. Every single one of these gadgets has a fun use to it, except the signal scrambler. This thing sucks. I just bring it around for the same reasons I got Red and Cavalier to max level. It's supposed to jam intel devices or other people's gadgets. You're supposed to place it down and force others to go search for it. It's just that the range is so small and you only get one. Compare that to being able to disguise yourself 
yourself as a pool floaty or camp someone's body by being a potted plant. The jump pad can also shoot you upwards to disengage fights or to reach the upper floors of certain maps. Also consider the various traps you can set down. I would encourage you to use them all, but I almost feel like it's in vain. Just swap around the second slot. You can do that for me. You can throw down goo in a hallway that slows people down to a crawl, and it's really funny to imagine some guy walking through all of it to commit to the bit. Deceive has three modes, solos, duos, and trios. Solo players, ignore this. You will likely be found dead in a few minutes. If you're with a team, or maybe an e-girl, you lucky slugger you, there's some protocol to follow here, because no, sorcery, espionage is not more about following your heart than following the plan. Following the plan is good, because with a plan, no one gets locked out of the purple room, then mulched to death by a team that saw you open the no-no door. If you open any locked door, let your fucking teammates in. If you unlock the door, that door is only open to you. Many games are lost because these doors can shut you in with another team like it's a saw trap. If you see your teammate hacking a door, stand near them so that you can go in with them. Don't expect them to know you would like to come in. Never assume that. Are you a vampire? You want to ask politely before you enter any building? No. Speaking of doors, that's where a lot of the intel management comes in. Each objective is locked by two doors, one taking five points of intel and another taking eight. You might get lucky with the first door if some guard walks in or leaves a key somewhere, but your intel is capped at 10, so 5 plus 8, and when you factor in that upgrade, you need to understand that rules separate us from the savages. If you open the expensive purple door, you get the gold upgrade. Anyone who cannot follow these guidelines should be served their dinner from a tin can. When you get the case, you can use the objective scanner to find the exact location of rival agents while rapidly draining your intel. Yeah, I saw you run up with that blade. Remember how in Hunt Showdown, when you get the objective, you can see people a bit? Same thing with less slurs and you don't have to swim through an ocean of barbed wire first. Maybe some goo pods if you're up against me. Me. The briefcase is always locked behind a door that requires 10 intel points, so whoever gets that door should not be the person to get the briefcase unless they also eat on all fours. However, there is a golden upgrade sitting behind the case, so you can use that to make someone measure up if they're lacking. The path out of the objective room is littered with choke points. At this point, most people acknowledge the briefcase's power and stop acting like NPCs. You'll start seeing a lot of guards suddenly spasm left and right like they're, I don't know, holding an angle instead of looking for sandwiches. Once you get past them, you need to extract. There are three points on the map that will pick you up and get you out. At this point, everyone is out for blood. You probably won't make it off this ship unless everyone is dead. Technically, there's a timer pushing you to make a move, but information is on your side. You can check for people's location, dip back, and grab more intel before going in at the perfect time. The time to kill and deceive is slower than most games I've played. A team focusing on you will burst you down, but in your average fight, you might just have a moment to think something out. Just make sure it's a good thing. Thing. Then you get on that ship and congrats, you've won. That's Deceive Inc. in a nutshell. But I do have some questions about its business model. Deceive Inc. doesn't have the smartest one. They try to sell you skins like every other game, but seem to ignore the fact that you start the game as fucking earnest. Even if you do get revealed, they put a sharp red overlay on your character to make you stand out. You wouldn't be able to make out the skin even if you tried. It's gonna be new character releases the whole way. So maybe don't leave us in the dark for three months, then announce the new guy a day before he actually exists. Deceive Inc. has some of the worst marketing I've ever seen. Also. I, I genuinely can't believe I'm saying this, but Deceive Inc. might be charging too little in-game currency for the new characters. I grabbed Octo the day he dropped for free, which might seem okay. I played a decent amount, except I could have bought Octo eight more times. I have two years worth of content loaded up, and I don't even think I've been playing that much. A lot of people would like this game, like a lot, but I'm also not a fucking idiot. Maybe it'll turn around, maybe it won't. But there's probably someone watching this who would enjoy it. I'm not banking on the word of a YouTube channel to change the entire trend Deceive is following, but hey, you can still play it today as of, uh, Saturday the 21st, 2023. And if the player count continues to look like Chavez's chin, at least you'll have fun the entire way down. I, uh, I didn't really think of a better way to end this video except for that, uh... <laughs>
and Anthony R. Chambers. Thank you for sticking around this long, and I hope you have a good rest of your day.